So I've done quite literally one race review this year. If I'm being honest, I just haven't been keeping up with the Formula 1 as closely as I have been before because Sundays I'm usually racing and doing stuff for that with the live streams and all that stuff. But if I'm being honest, the whole social media war between fan bases is just, well, it's just making me bored and pushing me away a little bit. I mean, even by sort of Spain last year, I was just wondering why the hell am I doing these race reviews? And yes, I know, I know, I know, I know, just just stay off Twitter, just don't read the comments. But when you do all of this as your, in inverted commas, job, you need to be on Twitter and stuff like that because those in the know often have something interesting to say or something will pop up for one of those accounts that post the historic stuff and then that gives me an idea for a video for story time. But this weekend was the British Grand Prix my home race as it so happens and the last 12 laps are absolutely epic to the point where you've got people going this is what f1 should be and well you know you've got five cars scrapping for second place at one point and you can't really ignore that kind of thing can you although it was a rough start to the race a first lap pile up wiping out chinese rookie zhou guan yu or guan yu zhou i will get it right one of these days Basically what happened was Russell listed to the left on the start and Gasly tried to go up the middle and then there was contact. Just one of those things really, the start is the most dangerous part of a Grand Prix. I mean yes Russell was going to the left but I don't think either he or Joe were anticipating the Alpha Tauri to go lobbing it down the middle like that. But the outcome was worrying. For one the Sauber, I mean sorry the Alpha, ended up being upended pretty much on the spot and then the roll hoop collapsed, but what do you expect with the cars weighing 9 million tonnes these days, and then proceeded to skid on its lid for about 200 yards, where it somehow ended up vaulting the tyre wall and ending up in the gap between the tyre wall and the catch fence. And this is on top of what already happened in the Formula 2 race, where a piece of, let's be honest, idiotic blocking from Roy Nissany resulted in another driver getting launched on a sausage curb and crashing into Nissany. I know there are still those out there who are still crying about the halo, but without it there would have been two serious injuries, if not deaths, this weekend. And top sausage curb expert Abby Eaton was quick to mention the sausage curb problem, and she might be right. The FIA, after this accident in Formula 2, really should take a strong look at the sausage curbs. And the whole thing about the history of curbing and how we've ended up at this point is probably another video by itself. Wednesday's video, maybe. But luckily, Joe is okay. They managed to eventually fish him out of that gap and he went to the medical center for checks. And there was also some pretty good amateur footage from that corner at the start of the race. You've got the car skidding on its lid towards the barrier and people making a lot of noises in a typical British fashion. You've got the typical, Ooh. you've got the typical, you know, ah, and you've just got one guy in the background just going, fucking hell, not in a, Oh my god, oh good golly, that's a massive one, isn't it? More of a... This is going to take up some of my time, isn't it? And while we're on the subject of reactions, the crowds at the British Grand Prix did bring out the best, you know, like I just mentioned, with that one just being funny in the sea of screaming, and the worst. Now, I'm a football guy. Booing is part of it. When the team lineups get read out, there'll be a cheer for all the home players and then a boo for each of the away players. 99% of the time, it's just a bit of harmless banter. It's just a, a bit of a cheeky dig at the opposition. But then you get the booing of national anthems and stuff, which, look, that's not on. And Max getting booed wasn't exactly in the spirit of motorsport. It's more of a gentlemanly thing racing, isn't it? But then this race came in the same week that Max's effective father-in-law, Nelson Piquet, was in the news because of some choice words he made in reference to the hometown hero. So expected? Probably. Right? Nah. But then there were Max fans tweeting on, well, Twitter about how the British crowd was cheering Max's spin in qualifying. I think you should probably go and watch that footage again because I think you'll find they actually cheered the save rather than the actual spin. There was the initial gasps as Max went round, but as soon as he recovered it, everyone went, way! You know, it's, it's, it's the same thing that happens over here if um, if someone trips on a paving slab and, and stars it out. That's that collective, way! And, you know, when, a, when, when the girl behind the bar drops a pint glass, it's... It was just a bit of harmless fun, but this is the thing with Formula 1 fan bases. They like to take everything so, so personally and seriously. But 
And this is the stuff that makes us us. Makes you proud to be British, really? We can cheer the pantomime villain spinning, but it's okay because we've all got jags. But seriously, though, it was all just a bit of harmless funny. You don't need to take it that seriously at all. Booing Nadine Dorries on the podium, though, that was pure hatred. But if it does make you feel any better, they did cheer Max over taking sights on the hangar straight. But back to the racing, and it's probably the best racing we've seen under the new regulations. A scrap between Hamilton, Leclerc and Perez, and then Alonso coming in for a crack as well. And I don't think I've ever heard a cheer at a motorsport event like the moment Hamilton went past Leclerc and Perez at club when they were duking it out like that. The close racing made you forget that Perez forced Hamilton off the road. But, you know, nobody got their car smashed up. Carry on. Although it was interesting to see nobody get put under investigation for forcing drivers off track, which I believe is something that got changed following what happened at Brazil last year when Verstappen tried to take Lewis into the next postcode, or at least after Austria when there was all that brouhaha surrounding people being put into the gravel. There were some people mad that Perez had forced Leclerc off as well as cutting the corner, and then just three corners later forced Lewis off. I mean, similarly, Max did it to Leclerc on lap one of the restart and then twice again to Schumacher, and no investigation there either. So maybe a look into what happens there. I mean, my opinion on forcing drivers off the road in real racing, maybe not sim racing, but in real racing at least, is if you force a guy up towards the line and maybe over the line, then, you know, so long as nobody got their car damaged, it's just good, hard racing. But if you're doing it two times, three times, four times over the course of a race, it's going to turn into a case of... Are you able to defend without doing that? But that's just me. Science was able to get away after all that, then Hamilton tried to make his move at cops around the outside of Leclerc and, you know, credit to Leclerc, with that busted end plate and 12 lap older hard tyres, managed to hang it around the outside. Which I'm sure has got everybody comparing that racing to lap one of last year. But with a Mercedes, a Red Bull and a Ferrari fighting like that, you love to see it. And at the end of it all, Carlos Sainz becomes a race winner after 150 attempts, which, after the little rough patch he had, it will do wonders for his confidence and will push him on. Ferrari needs a resurgence now, and the strategy needs to get better if they want to catch back up to Max. With the issues Max had in this race, Ferrari will need to capitalise better on them, because even if Max is out of the picture, Perez still exists. But anyway, in all, a pretty entertaining British Grand Prix. And some would say that this is real racing, this is what F1 should be. And some people will be saying, probably what it should be, but will it always be like that? Probably not, but Austria's next, and that's a pretty good track, so who knows? But I will leave you with one tweet that came out of the Grand Prix, and this is after the Grand Prix had, had all been wrapped up. All the Paddock Club Tories came by on a truck, waving at us and sipping from their wine glasses, and the whole crowd booed them. Then some random maintenance bloke comes by in his truck, and he gets cheered as if he's Lewis Hamilton. But anyway, that's a thing that has happened, and this has been my opinions on the thing. If this thing has made you think things about the thing that happened, then click the thing that makes you like this thing, and obviously get subscribed and get the bell on as well, so you never miss out on any future content. Mega thanks to the people on Patreon for the continued support, and if you wish to help out with the Image Acquisition Fund, you can contribute by clicking the link down in the description, where there'll also be links to Discord, and also to my socials. So until next time, I've been Aidan Millward, have a great day wherever you live in the world, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. Goodbye.